All right, so cameras have not been allowed in this courtroom, just audio, but we did just learn this breaking news. The judge will allow the verdict to be live streamed on the court's official YouTube channel. That decision comes after multiple requests from several media outlets. I want to bring in News Nation legal contributor Jesse Weber. He's an attorney and anchor at the Law and Crime Network as well. Uh, Jesse, this is a pretty major development that the judge has now allowed this, right? Surprising, considering there has been no media access whatsoever. I mean, the best that we've been able to get understanding what's happening in that courtroom is our very own reporters. I think there's something to be said for this. I mean, once the jury comes to a decision, that's going to be it. Now, obviously, if she's convicted, there will be appeals. But I can understand why the judge would allow this in the effort of transparency. This is a very important case. It has obviously garnered immense national attention. I think there are some disturbing but important issues. And look, as somebody who is a lawyer and somebody who also is in the media, I can understand and actually recognize that this is a good decision by the judge to allow this, uh, considering everything that we have seen and heard about what's happened in this case. Yeah, let's talk about some of, of the testimony, and it has been compelling. It's been heartbreaking at every turn. Uh, the text that we just heard from Lori to Chad about this orchestrated plan um, to deal with the children, it seemed like a major piece of circumstantial evidence. Can the defense come back from this? Unlikely. And it's, I'm so glad you said that, because when the message that was just read, where it seemed you could argue that Lori maybe didn't know what the plot was regarding the children. That's one interpretation. She's asking Chad, is there a plan? Her attorneys barely cross-examine this FBI agent on that. And why? We have barely heard anything from the defense or at least whatever, you know, we don't think they're going to actually present any witnesses. Whatever they've done in questioning the state's witnesses, we, it hasn't been a clear sense of where they're going. And I think at the end of the day, these kinds of text messages are so important. Why? Because in conspiracy cases, in murder cases, the communication between the two alleged co-conspirators is what seals the deal and what ultimately can grant a conviction here. And so the fact that you have these communications, what were supposed to be private, and it gives you the inner workings of Lori Vallow Daybell and Chad Daybell, I think that this is just going to be enough for the jury. I don't think we should be surprised if she's convicted. She may not be convicted across the board on all the charges, but I would be very surprised if she is not uh, because the prosecution's ending on a very strong note. Right, and you bring up a really interesting point because the defense hasn't said who they will call as witnesses and they haven't done much to reveal what their plan is in cross-examination. Do you think that's on purpose or are they essentially throwing up their hands at the case? Okay, so... In typical cases, right, you would imagine you put forward a massive defense here that she didn't do it, throw Chad Daybell under the bus, throw Alex Cox, her deceased brother, who the evidence says that he's the person that killed the kids. You throw him under the bus. We haven't seen that. I, I am theorizing. I can't say this, but one of the things, I've studied this case for the last three or four years. I wouldn't be surprised if Lori Vallow Daybell told her attorneys, do whatever you can but to, to, you know, fight the evidence, say it's weak, question the credibility of the people who have testified against me, but don't do anything to jeopardize my husband, Chad Daybell. I don't want to do anything to jeopardize Alex Cox. That's maybe why we kind of have this shaky defense, a kind of not clear defense. That's the best that I can understand because I've seen openings where you should question a witness and bring up certain points, and we haven't quite seen that. I think we're all scratching our heads as to why. Yeah, I'm scratching my head over this one. There was testimony about death percentages. Um, it was really confusing yeah. to hear some of that. Were you able to make sense of any of it? Unfortunately, yes. And by the way, in a case, you know, normally you would hear about this, oh, what a shocker. Nothing shocks me anymore after what we've heard in this case. The idea here is under these warped religious beliefs is that there were percentages by which these kids were going to die. What was the likelihood that they were going to die? And the fact that Chad and Lori were questioning the percentages and whether or not these kids had demons within them and they were trying to eradicate the demons, the fact that these kids die shortly after these messages, what is the defense going to say? It's just mere coincidence this happened and Lori Vallow Dable didn't have any part in it whatsoever. Remember, she's charged with murder with respect to the kids and conspiracy to commit murder. So they're trying to get her in a number of different avenues. But unfortunately, that's, uh, that's what we're dealing here. These, this, this woman who's talking about the deaths of her children. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.